Hello, everyone. I hope that audio is working. Hello, Adrian. Hello. You hear oh, me okay? that works. You're a little loud, but I think generally it works. Hello, Adrian. <laughs> how are you? I am loud. How are you? <laughs> I'm very proud of myself for setting this one up so <laughs> properly. Oh, great. Like It's been a while for me. I think you are actually a lot more of a streaming veteran these days because you've also been quite streaming for a while. But first, I'll hand over to you in a moment for an introduction. I think I'll just tell people first who you are, what's going on here. Adrian is, what's your official title? I put community and social media. That's perfect. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that's kind of what you do at Blankans now. Adrian is doing community and social media for us, has joined the team very recently. That is why today we're going to jump in together, play a little bit, answer some light questions on the game, on you as a person, Adrian, because I think people will be quite intrigued to learn about you and hopefully learn enough so that they then feel like, huh, that guy, I would love for that person to do more of these streams and pre present the game alongside me or ideally also without me. <laughs> like, that would be my favorite scenario. But let us see how that is going. So, Adrian, who are you? Where are you from? What's your background? How did you end up here? Oh, okay. Thank you for the introduction. That was very good. My name is Adrian. You can call me OK Adrian if you want to. I have been a streamer. Hello, everyone, by the way. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I've been a streamer for nine years on Twitch, and I have been a partner for eight and a half years. And recently, I have been a Twitch ambassador for two years now. And I just, you know what? I love these types of games. I tend to fall into them, and I heard a couple of descriptions of how this game was modeled after and the games they were modeled after, and how could I resist that? You all remember Chris Slight, right? Well beloved Chris Slight. I don't. I completely uh, forgot about that man. Yeah, who is that dude? He's not around for like two weeks and he thinks he's No, else. no. Uh, we dearly missed. Very dearly missed. I just remembered, by the way, I have a light too. But sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, you know no, Chris? Fine. Yes, I've known Chris for quite some, quite a few years now. We've done some work together at PAX East and under the Versus Evil banner and some stuff during Insert Coin and some hmm. stuff for XSplit. And he was like, hey man, I think this group would really like you. And I think you would really like them. And I think you really like this game. And I'm like, man, Chris, that's a lot of really likes. I don't know if that'll commit. And so we did it and it turns out he was right. Chris is always right. <laughs> so here I am in the right population with the right people, um, situated over in the United States in Ohio. And I look forward to taking everything that I've done for streaming. And I also do hosting and interviewing. I was the official host of TwitchCon last year, like one of the two main hosts. That I've is also done Comic Cons. Also something like that. that impressed us quite a bit. Like when we heard that, we were like, yeah, that's that guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> that's how I mostly skate through life is people saying that guy knows what he's doing. And I'm like, <laughs> I hope they're right. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like exactly. yeah just lo don't let them notice seem confident be confident right as long as the people keep saying he did a good job you're like i did didn't i yeah <laughs> yeah uh as i said um super uh, thanks thanks for the introduction first of all um super interesting i think that you also have such a strong background in streaming i think also when chris back in the day applied the whole x split thing was super interesting because i remember when i started Getting into streaming, we still had that as like a very big choice where XSplit and OBS was kind of very evened out and how many users were choosing which, for which reasons. And I think over the time OBS kind of took over, I think it's fair to say that, in their user base at least, even though XSplit's still pretty good software and I frequently hear people saying, hey, I actually use that. Um, super glad to have you. I think we really struggled finding someone again where we felt like, hey, this person not only understands the genre we're making, the game, but also brings a good vibe, some the type of kindness and friendliness that we are looking for for someone that represents this game and this community. So super stoked to have you. But you. I've heard one bad thing about you, which is that oh, you have not played the game as much as you should by this point, because it's quite new to you. This... And this I saw an incident with a Grizz. I saw an incident with a Grizz where basically that Grizz was so easy to kill because you played on a build that did not have the combat tuning. So I think today we should actually jump in and try to fight something again. I'll help, of course, but 
generally, that there is more. There's way more to the combat. It is not as easy. Uh, let me just quickly jump to your server. Did you already make any progress on that char? Because we kind of frequently delete our progress on these chars. Yeah, I made some progress. Actually, I have a pair of pants on right now. You can be jealous if you want to. I have on a cloth tunic and I have a tiny band-aid. Oh, <laughs> look at Mr. Rockefeller <laughs> right here, huh? Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, Throwing the big bones into the arena. Wait, let me check. I'll quickly activate player names. I'll actually jump. I think I'm on your server. Let me just quickly check with my absolutely not cheating tools. Of course. Uh, there you are, I know. Do you, Can you... Oh, wait, maybe I can... Does that work? Not that I am at all cheating right now. You would never cheat. Never. Okay, I think, By where the way, are you the on bandit. the server roughly? Because then I would quickly run towards you. Uh, kind of dead in the center, in the middle of the woods. Perfect. I'll actually switch over. I think I have to just quickly make it so that actually we see the game. Perfect. Uh, can you say something just to make sure that... Hello. Perfect. Still works, I think. People should hear the game's <laughs> audio, and things should Still actually works. be kind of working. Um, I have my half cheater char from yesterday still online. Uh, I, I had, I have committed some crimes in regards to live server cheating. I'll not do that again. But yeah, I think you've earned the right to do that. Uh, people are suggesting that we should go to the Gris and the Ice Gris from next to the graveyard. There's an Ice Gris, which is called a Frost Main, by the way, next to the graveyard. I did not even know. It's not supposed to be that easy, uh, that much down there. Okay. Well, like I said, I have a bandage, but it's not for me. It's actually for the Frost Main, for what I'm oh. going to do to it. Really? Yeah, it's not for me. Okay, okay. And it's, 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 uh, come, I'll come over and check how good your fighting skills are. Are you still with a Twig Sword? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, I am. I have a twig sword only because I feel like that's fair for both me mm -hmm. and the competition. If I were yeah. to upgrade that, then, you know, what's the point? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, 100% agreed. I think also, interesting note, you mentioned that you do or did like our explanation of what type of games we are kind of taking inspiration from with this one. What type of games do you play or did you play before? One of the big ones they point out, uh, you all pointed out when you're talking is you drew a little inspiration from Final Fantasy XI, hmm. and even when I play this game, I like that, and I see it a lot because the battles themselves take a long time, the consequence of dying, the running from one location to the other and utilizing the map and using signposts to get there mm -hmm. the entire time, the trek to get there back to the original corpse, like all of that difficulty level stuff is the kind of stuff that I enjoy. Ah. But I also understand it's finding a balance between difficulty and that kind of stuff too, yeah. so I enjoy that journey. Super interesting because like Eri, especially one of our lead game designers, you've met him, he plays Final Fantasy a lot and Rene does. Like both of them are super yeah. active on Final Fantasy. I think that's where main parts of the influence from that came from. Because I've played it, but I not... Also, generally when I say about MMOs and survival games, I've actually played them. That starts at like 200 hours, I would say. Before that, it's very hard to judge an MMO. And I don't think I really have what 200 hours in Final Fantasy. So I'm a noob in that game. Uh, hey, you know where what? are you roughly? Because I can't see you yet at the spawn. But I, I shall... am... The woods in the middle of the map, I'm headed to the southeast where all that stuff is. Southeast of those woods. Do you see the golden apple tree on the map? I do. That's where I was originally. Oh, can we meet up there? Sure, I'll meet you there. Of course, I'm kind of close to that. Because I think... Uh, it's also super interesting always for me to see how people... Sadly, you already have some playtime now, so it's not like you're an actual noob. But <laughs> I love to see how people play this game when they've never played it before. Because I think what's super interesting is that we are already discovering from the already... Like from the play state currently, that there is some people who are very familiar with MMOs who play this game in a very specific way and that there's a lot of people who are very familiar with survival games who play in a very different way and also have a very different experience. You would, would you consider yourself more of an MMO or more of a survival player? Um, I think a mixture of both. Because huh. I find myself getting like, I, the thing is, 
I get easily distracted in games. So mm -hmm. I have a task in my head, the things I know I should be doing. Like, okay, I don't have clothing, I should get clothing. I've started building my town, I need these materials. But if I'm out gathering materials and I see like an, a vista or a landmark, mm -hmm. my ooh, what is that meter goes off. And so I go, ooh, what is that? And I go over there and do that. Ah, very interesting, because that's how Marcus often describes his experience. Ah, oh, there you are, perfect. Um, which is also so interesting, because... Oh, now your dame disappeared suddenly. Ah, I think because you were in there. There you are. There, hey. you are. there you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! That's, oh, wait. I was trying to wait. Skyrim my way up this uh, cliff side right here. <laughs> Uh, that's so interesting because like super often level designers say, oh, this is impossible, and then immediately a player climbs up. <laughs> wait, where that's are my you? favorite tool. Uh, there I'm you are. There. I see you with your sword wandering by. Hey. Hey, hello, hello. Whoa. Yeah, See this? Cool. You stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Cool haircut. Thank you. Okay, well, what is our plan? Let, let's at least try to set up a small bay. Or let's do some fighting, because if I remember okay. correctly, maybe that's also actually good to bring that up. You are technically on vacation. It is incredibly yeah. early in the morning, and you're only doing yeah. this so I can align your time zone with my incredibly weird time zone still make things happen while you're technically not supposed to work it's appreciated very much thank you so much for <laughs> coming to this just so that you can say hi to everyone uh so let's just fight a little bit then i would like to travel to my favorite hot bath with you which of course is like Aww. very <laughs> just very deserved after that and then i'll send you your way so you can do things that you enjoy a little less but still enough to actually keep them doing the rest of the day that works for me. And just so you all know, I'm playing on laptop too. It's running very smoothly on laptop, but I didn't bring my mouse. So I'm using a mouse pad for what? combat. So. Okay, maybe I'll take <laughs> these guys for you then. Like, uh... You know, I was just going to tell the chat. I'm going to tell you all the secret. The secret is let him get all the targeted AOEs and then yeah, I yeah. dash out really quickly. <laughs> Damn, that was a crit right there. Like, I, I, we are so strong. I, I, I'm so not used to playing with with people because I only test on the internal servers and everything. No one ever being there on my internal Asian test server. Nice to fight. We have such differing hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wait, let me check. Actually, my gear is also pretty, pretty mediocre, but okay-ish. Uh, we have a very interesting idea. I'll share that later because once you are going your way, and enjoying your day, I'll actually transition this a little bit into kind of a Q&A session, I would say. Let's head over here. This is where the hot bath is. Um, Whoa, look at that comment. Coreborn is number five on the Steam Fest survival games. What? Really? Yeah, according to Frozen. Oh. Like, How do you feel about we, that? We are currently sadly experiencing the problem that we don't fully show up on certain things because there's a lot of people playing. Which is really great. We constantly have a lot of people online, actually, for an indie game. I think even at night we rarely drop below 100 players. Even though people are reporting that some of the servers feel empty, that is, of course, due to the next fest, us still optimizing numbers, how we split people among those servers. But uh, we're not showing up as much as we would like to. So if this is the first time you're hearing about this game, check the demo out. We're currently at Steam Next Fest, and you can also wishlist us, which directly supports us and helps Adrian to still have a job when he comes back from his vacation. <laughs> that would be <laughs> ideal. Coming back and still being employed would be great. Yeah. Also, to be fair, we've planned that for quite a while, that, so that might last longer than just that vacation. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. That, that is huh? generous. Uh, oh, look at that. There's a little house over there. Yeah, I was kind of surprised too. Also, it kind of looks like the house that... Oh, but this one is deteriorating because the roofs are generally the first parts that go. Even though it doesn't show visual damage. I think no, just no one... Well, this belongs to no one. Wow. It does. I was about to say, no I have an here. idea who this belongs to right now. Have, do I have a hammer? I do have a hammer, right? I do. So, <laughs> wait, let me just check. Let's let's do some solid stealing, I would say. Sir, could you move a little bit, by the, please? <laughs> Are you gonna take the time? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, free house. It's free real estate, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's free real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this I can't is... believe someone is offline right now, building this house, waking you up. Like, mm, I can't wait till I wake up so I can actually start my town. And <laughs> yeah, everything. I mean, look at this. There's even a horse here and there, like a farmland driver right there. This is completely free. It needs a roof. Some one bucket of paint and we can move right in, Adrian. 
Poor okay. John Marston right now. Okay, let, how about we go to the hot bath first, because then you can actually go your way and I'll come back and steal this stone. <laughs> Perfect. I don't want to be associated with your theft because we're gonna blame yeah, yeah. you too. I I'll name it after you. Aw, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I don't want to be associated, yeah, but naming it after me. <laughs> I'm gonna get that social media message. Hey, you, Adrian. Talking my about house. social media, you are yes. also already in charge of our social media accounts, right? Because I've noticed they are a million times better, and still not as many people as I want to are checking them out. Yes, so right now, all of you who are watching this uh, through Twitch, if you're watching through a VOD later on on YouTube, you can visit us on Play Corborn, and that's on Facebook, that's on Instagram, that's Twitter, that's TikTok, many different avenues. And we're using that account to not only post updates for video and for screenshots and things like that, but we're also utilizing your media. So if there are funny things that you do, art that you do, we try to include that, any funny moments. But... One of the things I've been trying to do lately is show off a lot of the multiplayer aspect. Because there's a lot of single mm -hmm. player stuff, and you can do that. You know, if your friends aren't online, or maybe you don't have friends, say, this is a good way you can get friends. Because as you can see, traveling with someone else and doing combat with someone else really enhances the experience. Yeah, definitely. I think that's also a really good point to bring up because we have so many people here. This is our hot bath, by the way. Feel free to jump right in. Oh, man. Uh, Thank you. I, I've, I've made a special spot over here where you can actually use the sit emote and then perfectly fit in here. Because I think a lot of... Oh, well, maybe a little... <laughs> maybe, maybe a little more over here because I noticed that a lot of people are sharing super school screenshots with us on Discord and if you would like to share them on social media we also really appreciate that and all the accounts that you just mentioned Adrian I put them at the bottom left of the screen there's a little little cool roll oh. <laughs> kind of underwater <laughs> <though>. <laughs> this is how I heal okay. I'm underwater <laughs> I submerge myself and oh. just, the world goes away <laughs> I would away really like to make this happen here, that when you go in, you re, like, regenerate some health and you don't get the chill effect anymore. That would be so cool. Uh, generally, Adrian, I want to let you yes. off the hook. Uh, next time, I think we can take more time because it's so early for you. Like, honestly, I appreciate it so much that you actually just came to say hello. Um, I think everyone here, you'll see Adrian and me a lot more, a lot more frequently together on this stream. Um, thank you so much. When are you back yes. next week, right? I come back Saturday and then I'll actually be live for a stream on Sunday. For oh, an true. Hour. Yeah, the Sunday stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on so Sunday. All you can check me out on Sunday. Uh, that will be on this account, correct? Correct. And also on Steam, right? Correct. Awesome. That's actually pretty, pretty, like, really, really good because the Steam stream. That's pretty amazing, to be honest. Like, there were a lot of people watching. That went very well. Also, super cool feedback from the chat. But... Is there... Is, yeah. Yeah, sorry? Oh, I was going to say, chat, listen, I'll just let you know a couple of things. Number one, if you see anything on social media and you know it's me behind the account, you want to communicate and talk and comment, I'll be there. I keep it refreshing it when I'm active during working hours, looking at all your comments, so thank you. And number two, on Sunday's stream... I'm telling you right now, I promise I will not die one time to anything. Not the environment, <laughs> not in Grizz, nothing. For one hour, I will have zero deaths. I will so influence the game design team to tune things so much harder. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it, Hauser. Right next to the spawn, six frost main, waiting for you in a pit of like ice water. <laughs> I'll be waiting for them, all right? <laughs> I came from the trenches. I've played games all my life. You spend as many as you want, and I'll send them right back to you as corpses. Okay, I I'm very curious to see that. We're actually still tuning combat a little, because I think it's still too easy, but challenge accepted. I'll be there watching, seeing if those things go well. So thank you so much for being here, Adrian. Uh, I'll leave you to your well-deserved vacation. Honestly, super excited to have you with us. Really, really happy we found someone that is as welcoming and as nice as you not only to watch but also to listen to uh, super excited to have you back after your vacation thank you so much thank you for having me everyone i will see you on sunday hauke thank you for the good time everyone enjoy the game keep wish listening keep playing it enjoy it's a very good thing i'll just i'll just turn off your camera so that like smoothly you're <laughs> coming <back. laughs> well, the so hot, right? so <laughs> oh, God, thank you cool. bye bye adrian bye <laughs> Okay, perfect. 
Uh, I've also muted Adrian on stream, so it's only us now. It is only us now. Which means that I will actually run back and try to steal that town. Because no one seems to care about it. <laughs> so it's officially mine. I could also build a town next to that town and basically be like, hmm, see how things are going then. But yeah, I'll go back there. Also, this gives us the chance to con to kind of smoothly slide over to the... There's another coal right there. I just saw one here. Whoa, the shadow. We have, we have to make them a little like this for performance reasons. Hope to smooth that out, but so cool. I also, I know that a lot of people have said, hey, the performance of this game is not yet optimized. We're really working on that. It's just we don't want to give up that view distance. I mean, look at it. It's so cool and so gorgeous that you can see that far, that you can see all those things in the distance, that I come over like such a little hill and see that immediately. Hello, excuse me. I'm trying to have an emotional speech here. Wait, I'm on an American server now, right? So my ping should be, oh no. Oh. Not that horrible, hopefully. That's a little laggy though, but kind of doable. Um, something. Did the patch happen already today? I don't think so, right? Oh god, this fight will take forever. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm running out of stamina. God, I, I really have to focus. I, I kind of underestimated how strong these things are. Like, I feel felt so much better. <laughs> Get away from me. Oh. Okay, that's a good opportunity. Oh. And that's it. Perfect. We deserve that. So, um, I'll in a moment talk about some changes that we're planning to do. Coal is one of them. We have increased on this current patch the spawn rate of that. Thank you so much for the feedback. There was indeed a problem with the spawn rate of the coal on the map. So basically, coal did not appear often enough and not frequent enough. We increased the frequency and will hopefully be able to also increase it so that there's not only one here, but two. And also there's only two hits on it, which we will hopefully be able throughout the week to increase to three or four. It's not an change that will be in immediately but there will be more or the respawn rate will be higher basically um now i'm looking back at the chat yeah thank you so much for everyone who's oh adrian is still in the chat <laughs> well well if it isn't you what you say. thanks adrian thank you uh no, honestly super cool that you are here thank you so much for coming uh, like i know how inconvenient shitty time zones are also so good to just call someone else's time zone shitty when you're sitting in in the middle of asia the coal game is hard right now. Yeah, 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 coal is way too hard to acquire. But let us transition to a little bit of a Q&A session because I think it's a good time to do that right now. Let me know if there's any questions. Um, mouse sensitivity option, when? Um, we've heard that quite a bit. We already have it on our roadmap. Maybe we will be able to bring that in until early access. I just don't want to overpromise. It is not of the lowest priority, but we want to focus on... So. Basically, after this beta, we would like to... Oh, sorry, I have to check if there's a message. No, we would like to focus a lot more on performance, on general bugs, on things that are not behaving properly, and, for example, still on the combat. And once we are satisfied with those things, we will then move to making new stuff. And mouse sensitivity, as small as it may seem, that is new stuff. It might cause bugs, and so we would rather be careful with promising that we'll be able to bring that in. Especially since we are generally so... So, what did I want to say? Ah, since we generally pushed so much in the recent times for quick delivery and QA sessions are just important. We need to assure quality and we want to do that more. How rare is Quartz at the moment? We are really struggling. Quartz is, I think, quite rare. I think the problem with the resources of Quartz, Quartz Sand and all the uncommon, rare and epic resources is that now is the first time that you players are slowly actually reaching the parts of the game where you need that after two, three days in the test. And so now we actually get that test data. So if you start feeling that something is super rare, that you're really struggling, just point that out on the feedback channel. Just a simple message, hey, this is where I am, this is our level, this is how many people we're playing with, and we are currently struggling with quartz. No need to exaggerate, no need to even feel like you're unheard. We did not tune things because we hate you. We tuned things according to the data that we got in our playtests, but sometimes it is incredibly hard to get good numbers there because 
our QA testers know the game. They know where to find quartz and they can't act as if they are forgetting that. So it's super interesting to see that. So yes, greatly appreciated the feedback on, hey, it is kind of hard or kind of easy to get things for me um, because then we can adjust accordingly. Is there any plans for in-game voice chat? Currently, there is not. The topic came up several times, but we have so far most of the time decided against it as it is quite complex. I still think it is a cool feature, especially we thought about making it very easy to access or to not access it. We've so far not encountered much trolling, to be honest. People are very good to each other so far, but we'll have to look into it. Maybe we'll do some experiments in the early access phases one or two, but currently there's no direct timing. It is not on our roadmap, which doesn't mean that it's impossible that it will come up. Is it normal that my game is a bit laggy? Generally, legginess in most cases can come from three things. Number one, your internet connection. I know it always sucks to have the blame on yourself first, but most of the cases where people reported legginess were that their internet connection was the problem. The second one generally being settings about the visuals of the game. Some people, for example, are not aware that changing some of these settings really helps. That's, for example, going to medium here, making the resolution smaller, full screen for some people runs better than windowed, and that's just something. Also, if you're experiencing tiering, um, turning vSync on or off might help with that. Like a lot of people have that problem. And the third one, uh, which one did I have? I had the internet connection. I had the graphic. Wait, there is a third common cause of the legginess. Ah, that you are on a server. Let's say you joined a friend on a server that is completely out of your region that might resolve in legginess. But that's it. If you're only talking about the combat, we are aware that there are certain cases where you fight something and then you kind of jump back and forth. It sometimes happens. We know the cause. We are working on it. We are trying to get it out. I don't think we'll be able to make significant pros that there's there within this play session or within this play test or open beta though, because it is a very complex topic and we're kind of afraid to push those changes to the life environment while we're still working on them. Is it normal that the chill armor with a fine pelt gives you plus five heat resistance and not chill resistance? Are you talking about the cloth armor or about the leather armor? Because I think if it's the cloth armor, it's a very good point. That is kind of irritating. I know why it might happen. The pelt is by our definition something that goes into light armor, but that might of course feel very strange when we're talking about chill and heat resistance. A very good point. Uh, I'll actually write that down. I know what you mean. I think at first I asked about it in a different way, but I know what you mean. I'll look into it. I think the answer here might actually be quite simple because of course I know what you mean. A pelt sounds as if it should be warmer and not colder. Good catch. Um, is it intended that Goth can one-shot any structure near the town center with their AOE attacks? I lost a few hours of progress uh, in the form of filled chests. We are aware of the problem that they hit chests. Chests will hopefully already in the next patch, I am not entirely sure, please correct me team members that are here if I'm wrong, be resistant to Gothkin damage. That's just something we overlooked. We just forgot that chests, of course, it's super punishing if they get hit by a Gothkin, so we have to take that out. We did not, I think, catch that on gravestones, which also need to be patched, but yes, uh, that is not intended behavior. We need to fix that. So no, you're not supposed to lose chests from that. That's not intended. Generally, I would say, it is interesting maybe to show it once. What happens a lot is that players, for example, I'll not be able to finish it, but I'll just put it here, put their town center. And then I think we underestimated how many of you immediately start doing something like this. You basically start putting a circle around it of foundations because you want to integrate it into your town center. Let's just actually, I hope this person forgives me. I'm so sorry. I can't do this now, but I can maybe, oh, I can do this. And then you basically continue to integrate it into your town center. We have to put that ramp back. We'll do that in a moment. Basically, you do something like this. And then it's like kind of closed off. Which is super understandable. But we made it so that these things are non-destructible by Gothkin. Foundations, ramps. So these. Stairs are also affected. And ceilings actually are not destructible by Gothkin. So if you only put this, and let's say this one is also more higher up, so is this, the Gothkin now have no way of accessing it. And our safe, a fail safe for that was that they spawn closer to the town center. 
The problem is, we did this because we thought, what if someone puts a town center on something like, let's just take one. I'm not sure if that actually works, but I'll try to do it. If someone puts a town center on something like this. I know that doesn't work right now, I think, but I'll still check if I can make it work just to show it better. Uh, it doesn't work. But for example, let's say this was possible and I put a town center over right here. Then there would be no way for the Gothkin to get up here properly because currently our Gothkin cannot jump. It is not that easy to set that up. We will though. Then we thought, hmm, of course, the best solution is they just spawn closer and closer and closer until they find a valid point. Problem is that all of you are doing this, which is super understandable, and we did not anticipate it. So the problem is now that they think, yeah, there's no way in here, so I'll just spawn right here, which is super punishing. So we have to revisit how these town attacks happen. If that is happening to your town, breaking this would immediately fix that. What also would fix that is putting a ramp here. Like, if you then take a ramp and put it right here, that should also, in most cases, fix that. If you put one here and one here. Because as soon as there's any edge that the Gothkin can't go over, which is also something that we have to tune, they will think so. Ideally, basically play a tower defense with them. Like, make a tower defense, uh, kind of put up some obstacles here and there, and I, I can't because I don't have a town right now. But that is what would work against that. I understand that is not ideal. We did not anticipate what, that everyone is just seemingly doing this thing. I totally get why you're doing it though, and we will definitely adjust the game so this is possible, and you can integrate the town center into your town a little more smoothly and nicely. Uh, just saying, maybe that was a good point to bring that up. It's a very long, very complex answer slash explanation, but I hope that helped some of you a little bit. Perfect. So now, as I said, we have to actually fix that ramp. Because I destroyed it and I promise and we have to promise that we fix it. I do not have an axe, so we actually have to do that. Perfect. Uh, let me just quickly get that ramp in here. And while I set it up. Uh-huh. Tuck. What are we missing? Two six light wood. Easy. Can I already craft an axe? No, of course not, because I'm missing. Ah, tweak the plant fiber. Easy. Okay, I'm checking the check the banger. Uh, law question. Can we get some info about the Praetorians in Korheim? Are there some sort of hedonist police or something else? They are basically kind of like a police, yes. The hedonists as a race are responsible for running Korheim on a management level, basically. And the Praetorians are kind of the police slash enforcers. Um, more and more of these law NPC and law sites will come in and explain more and more of that. Very good question, though. I hope that answered it. Okay, let me just quickly put that into my slot. It's actually running pretty okay considering on an American server right now. So I understand the thing with the town center. I'll address that right now. A lot of people say, hey, it would be so nice if I could move the town center around. Absolutely. That is not nearly as easy as it sounds though from a coding perspective. I'll explain to you in a second why when we go back to the... Actually, I can do it right here. Let us say, and again, oh, let us say, maybe it's actually, um, I don't want to cheat, but I'll, I think I'll try to explain with blueprints. I don't want to cheat on the life environment. It's just not a good idea. So basically, again, let us say I'm putting down a town center. Sorry, I'm putting down a town center right here. And now I build it and it's leveling and has a certain level. And let's say my town, of course, has a range. That range going somewhere, let's just say somewhere around here-ish. I'll just mark something so that we have an understanding of how big this town is. It's not accurate, but just as a, as a help to visually indicate what I'm doing. I'll also get rid of these bushes real quick so that I can explain better. It's actually pretty easy to explain things in this game when you... There's no space for dot nut, but those gorgeous dot nuts. Okay, anyways. So basically saying, hey, this is my town now. Tuck. Tuck. And tuck. Perfect. Saying this is my town now. And now I want to move this town center. So far, pretty easy, right? I take that town center, pick it up and put it somewhere over here. Let's just say that's what I'm planning to do right now. Absolutely viable. I can put it here. So basically this one would go. And that's where the problem happens. What happens the moment I pick this town center up? Let's say it is in an in-between state. It is technically still here, and I'm about to put it over there. All good. But let us say I'm in that in-between state, and now the server crashes. Or I have a disconnect. What then? Is the town center lost, or does it remain at its old position? We could say, let's say it remains at its old position. No problem at all. But 
That would mean that now I kind of have to in between save the town center with all of its progression and everything while you plan to move it right here. Everyone in a town can do that at all times. And when you do this, technically now, let's say you've like every time, and this is again connected to town attacks, every time a town attack happens, what happens is that our system calculates the viable paths for a gothkin and where they can walk. And it did that in the beginning, and now this is a viable spot. All cool. If you put it somewhere else now, you might have built something that is not viable. And I would technically have to check that, because let's say you put something here and here and here, and this is like super convoluted, super full of stuff, and you put your town center here. Now the Gothkin can spawn, and then they just suddenly spawn right next to the town center. And all of that is solvable. I, I understand that like, the first impression is, but you can do this and that and this. But I hope from this explanation you understand there is so many things connected to this. It is not nearly as easy. I need to save all the progression. I need to account for all the cases where you might have a disconnect or something happens. I need to anticipate where you're going to put that thing and what happens if town attacks happens. Also, if you put it here, then the extensions that are over here, I would have to keep saving the position because right now we basically say this town at center and the circle around it that is one saved information i would now have to split that up and now suddenly your town zone that you're saving here and this town center are two separate data and like it's very complex eventually we would love to make it able you able or enable you to move things around freely in your town center also stations for example of course you should be able to move a crafting station at a point where you want to it is just not as easy. We'll do our best to bring that in, but I'll be honest with you, that will not be an early access launch, and I don't think we'll even be able to have that in early access phase one, as we currently are still focusing on more gameplay-related features, even though I absolutely see the value of this quality of life feature. Uh... Oh, perfect. Um, the Steam Deck topic. I understand that it might seem very easy and it's just adding a graphics setting. That is sadly not accurate. We would have to allow for remapping of our controls, which we currently don't even do. And that's like absolutely on our side. We will soon do that. And I think right after that, it will be potentially a lot easier for us to also allow for a proper tuning of the... So let's put these stairs back. Maybe we'll add something nice for here for this person so that they are... Yeah. We'll leave them a beam so that they know we were here. Wow. Magnificent. Do I have enough twig? Can we technically build them a roof? Maybe they'll actually appreciate that. Oh. Huh. Why not? Oh god, I ran out of twig. But yeah, we will eventually look into it. It's absolutely, I agree, it is not the most gigantic technical task of all time. Just, we... Uh, also, if you want to map it yourself, to be fair, it already runs on Steam Deck. We have people on the team who do. We just do not officially support it. We will at some point, though. We totally understand. But bear with us. We are not a gigantic studio, and there is so many things that we still need to polish. And if we offer Steam Deck support and say we officially do it, we want to do it proper, and say, hey, this is Steam Deck support now. If you need any help, something is not working, we'll QA it and do it properly. Oh, I see you having FPS problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, we will do our best to bring that in. It just, yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll, I just, I can promise the world now, but yeah. Ooh, you can do it after you have a tier one town center. Just get the resources for a new town center and delete and replace where you want it. You cannot delete town centers though. That's currently not a thing, because we were too scared that people do that accidentally. We will eventually bring that into... Oh, also more light wood. Wait, how much do I, more do I need for the other roof? Pff, ten more twigs. Okay, so we need two, ten more twigs additionally and some light wood. We shall get there and then finish the house. It is not possible currently to remove a town center. We will eventually move to that. The problem is that we are afraid that people accidentally move a town center and lose a lot of progress. Or that since currently we do not allow for proper management of the things that are allowed to do in a town for members, it might be that one person accidentally deletes it or whatever. Once we bring in more member management, we will also allow for more features when it comes to the town center and potentially interacting with it. 
you can be a member of several towns at the same time, or five currently, and eventually we will pro most likely even allow for more. Uh, actually, our design initially was that we hoped that people would be parts of um, as many towns as possible. I think a lot of you are not even aware that you can just set up a second town somewhere. It is not your town, it is not your and your friend's town. That was never really the design, even the fact that it is the town carries your name was just a placeholder, and now we, we kind of got stuck with it. <gasps> Mystery back. Not donut. I think I. Oh, I didn't have that yet. Okay, I think I have enough resources to actually finish the house. How many nations are playable right now? Only one is playable right now. In early access phase one, we hope to bring in the second nation, and then eventually we will hope to bring in many, many more. Uh, at minimum, the six playable nations from the pen and paper adventure, um, which are the Hedonists, the Children of the Source, the Nosmerians, the Genetics the Steam Dwarves, and then the Sorromancers, and then potentially even more. Juman races, other nations of the world, like the Gibbs, the Grux, or whatever. Actually, we did kind of a good job here. Let's also repair the stuff. Oh, I should also show that I'm losing that, but uh, at least it's kind of working. Ah, it does. Nice. Tuck, tuck. Oh, I am missing... Oh, no, missing light wood. But anyways... I mean, come on, we did pretty fair here. I, uh, initially, I planned to steal it, and now we actually made it prettier. Okay, let's get rid of my hammer. Will it be possible to see friends on the map or set markers for each other? Yes, at some point that will absolutely be possible. I think the map is something that we might give some more love before early access launch. It is definitely in phase one, where we want to make things more intelligent. Also, groups are just not in this playtest because we had problems with the way we set up groups initially. And so we removed them from this playtest. We will later bring groups back. And then with that, hopefully at some point, a feature where you can see group members on the map. If you will see town members is a completely separate topic because we, if you join six towns and all these people are on the map, there is just, it's a little more complex than that, so that might take a moment. But yes. Any news regarding the German government funding? Sadly not. Not any news that I can or would be, I think, allowed to share. All that we're allowed to say at this point is we applied for a German, gov German governmental funding for the expansion of children of the children of the source and the related nation. If we do not get that funding, we might invest le energy into different areas of the game. Uh, might not be able to invest our energy into that part of the game as soon and in such... Is, what is the English word? Capacity as we were initially hoping. So once we have news on that, we'll immediately share them with you. Still, if you look at our roadmap, we will update it. If there's any changes, if this is the first time you're hearing about this game, check out our Discord. It is as a link right down there, scrolling through. Discord play Corborn or Corborn.gg, which is our website. On Corborn.gg, you find all these lists and can also wish list. Um, and on Discord, you find our roadmap, which will help you to understand better what's coming towards the next steps of this pro game. Also, to be fair, I think so far we've done our absolute best to progress as fast as possible and make the progress that you guys were hoping for. Even during the recent playtests, we implemented things just based on player feedback. We're trying to do the same right now, but we're also pushing for quality. So it might not be, it might not feel as impactful currently during this test because we're not bringing in a map or gigantic features. But what we're trying to do is polish, get rid of the most severe bugs and nicely we have at this point caught most of the things that ever caused server crashes for example actually there's been very few of those we have still a lot to work on and we want to mainly as things still polish the overall experience cool town i just saw it really nice placement of that also nice fence i really like this one I built this chaos i shall request membership maybe chaos will be this is very nice I never really built these square rooms with one thing in the middle, but it actually looks really good. I really like this. Ooh, but this corner is peeking out. Is it, is it taking damage? Oh, it is. Oh, no. Luckily, we set that very low, but this one... Ah, come on. We're, we're the good Samaritans of the server. We're going to fix that. Uh, let me also go over here. More questions coming. 
will it be possible to place structures in water? Yes, to some degree. So I'll explain that because I assume you'll understand a lot better what we did here. Currently, we do not have a swimming animation. Swimming is not nearly as, implement to, uh, nearly as easy to implement for us as we would have hoped. Um, so the problem is that you can swim. Since we didn't want you to constantly sink into the water at all places, we just decided that we're going to move the water up, basically. All water is now shallow. And at some point, you will not be able to build in these spots. What now if you put your town right in the center of this and I put a foundation and everything, then we drag down the soil later to f put the water and the swimming feature in. And what happens to your town? It would break. So what we basically did is we reserved all the areas of water for now as no build zones so that later we do not have to damage any towns. We will, once swimming is in, finally drag those back down, properly adjust it and then also create areas at the rims of the water where we allow you to build into the water to some degree. Build some nice things there that was already possible in the alpha and we want that back. We just had to reserve these areas. I hope that was a little understandable and why we did that. Uh. Tuck, tuck. How about the roof? Oh, the roof already broke. This needs fixing. Can I build? Oh, I can't build here. So no way to fix that roof. This poor guy. Can I? No, I can't. No, I can't put that there. Well, I hope this at least helped a little bit. Thank you so much, Animagus. As even though it is in German, uh, I have to say. And I'll honestly share that. It's It's been a wild ride. This is an amazing team, but we've kept pushing a lot for progress because we sincerely care about this game. And I might be the one that pushes the most as um, dreams are big, so are hopes, but hard work is what in the end brings things into existence. And everyone has been working incredibly hard and still we want to prove to people that we are not one of the one of the other early access games, but rather we're one that deeply and sincerely cares about the feedback of its community that wants to keep enhancing the experience. And we want to build a game that feels solid, fun and as if someone cares about it as much as you do when you invest time into it. And I think the result is something that it finally is at a point where I can say I'm proud of what we achieved. And I think it shows the vision for what we have in mind. There's still a lot of things to bring in. There's still a lot of improvement, especially when it comes to player flow, how to guide people in this game. And I understand that there is still often frustration, moments that don't work as intended, that there is some grindy aspects to it. I still think it is fun. And I, I may, might be, I think from the grind comes satisfaction once you've achieved something. So for me, there could be even more of it in there, but I think it is so great that we already got feedback and we end up somewhere in the middle where it feels like, hey, this is still a lot of work, but I feel like I can do it. And that sweet spot will reach over time, will reach until and during our early access. So if you feel like I want to be part of that, make sure to wishlist this game. It gigantically supports us and it really helps to bring this where we want it to be in a few months, years and hopefully decades. Marcus once said, like, I hope this thing is still running in 20 years. And <laughs> that would be amazing. But we'll see. Any plans for console beta demo EA? So um, we will release hopefully on all consoles and uh, will be cross platform even on mobile. But that will come after the early access. The early access might last one to two years. We'll see. We don't want to be stuck in it forever because I feel like we work the best when we have strict goals and we actually try to achieve them and aim for them strictly. But on the other hand, we also don't want to deliver something that doesn't feel polished. So yes, at some point we hope to be able to release a console and a mobile version. Also, I think there's still so much to this world from a law perspective that we haven't shown to people yet. Actually, I can make the music a little louder because there's so many nations still. Like Ambros is basically as like even if I stand up here, Ambros is kind of classical fantasy. It is basically a medieval society with of course a few elements of fantastical things and interesting creatures, but I think things get really interesting when we come to the children of the source with the lithical 
uh, with the liquid metals or we come to the lithical plains where dinosaurs roam the earth and things can get fantastical over the top when we can work on Korheim further and there's things that are steampunk like and yeah just a lot more comes in i'm super excited also i am super excited once we have the adventure in and can finally show what endgame content looks like that there is more than just this survival map and that bringing your town to level 10 is not nearly all the content we want to offer do you think that still progression is to skill progression is too fast i think that depends i think some skills are still too fast while others are st a kind of too slow to be fair though this these first two is the easy part of the skill progression and generally the first of the two of each of these expertises is should be kind of easy to dude we met you yesterday let's go to the other song come come look around uh and basically eventually we want to bring it to a point where it feels like i make good progress fast early in the beginning and then at some points it does become a little grindy but from that comes the value of someone being at the maximum of smithing being like a real blacksmith that has invested a lot of time and energy into this. And I think that's, if we achieve that, that you feel like, oh. If you achieve that, that you feel like, hey, I've invested a lot of energy, but the rewards are also quite big. That's cool. That's the sweet spot we want to hit. A dedicated story. I think there will at some point be kind of a story arc, but the way you experience will not be like an MMO or an RPG, where you just follow a quest line or a story from a quest line. No, that will not be the case. Oh, free grain. I'll take it. I love that I can see this windmill from nearly every. Yeah, I know. Thank you. It always leads me back home. Hello. Does everyone say something now? No. I can this gibbling finally stop singing? I can't hear my own thoughts anymore. I didn't know this voice line is here. Hell yeah! I'm so with you, sister. You already hear him in the background. Can this gibbling finally stop singing? I can't hear my own thoughts anymore. <laughs> I think this one I also tried to sing intentionally horrible. At least he shuts up for, I think, 30 seconds, and then he starts right again. Will there be little stories in the world? There already are little stories in the world. If you haven't found any of them yet, I greatly encourage you to look around, walk towards NPC. Maybe we can actually do that right now, because um, there is, for example, already some NPC that just tell you part of a story. Will I survive dropping down here? Well, let's just hope I do. Ooh, ow, ow, ow! Oh, oi, oi, oi. Can I make some food or something, or like some bandages? Okay. Even though we nerfed them. Nice. Where's my Duke's head skewers? Uh oh. Where are they? Ah, there they are. So, yes, there will be little stories in the game. There already are. I think one of. So, my personal favorite feature that is still not in the game that I can't wait for is events. Events will be gigantic in regards to the content they offer because they will most likely allow us to quite quickly bring in new content that you can play on a daily basis which will be like just i think so much fun so cool and will completely change how the world feels because this map will feel so much more alive with these because you will go into an area and something is actually happening your actions might affect what this world looks like and with that at some point there will be an identity to a specific server your survival server might feel different and that leads to the second big thing that I'm very much looking forward to, which will most likely still take a while, which is visiting. Visiting of other survival servers. Because I think once your town attacks become challenging and super interesting, it would be so cool if you're then able to go to Korheim and make people come to your, to your survival server and help with the town attack, play events on your server and things like that. Because I think that will be really, really huge. And... I know that I keep talking about these events and I don't want to overpromise. We currently have them in Early Access Phase 1 and we've already started some work on them so we know how to set them up. A lot of the systems are already in place but it might take something up until month until we feel like we are now happy with what they do and players will enjoy them. Maybe though we'll bring them in in a very small version in very fast and just see how you guys feel about them. So yeah.
Uh, in general, can you talk about was a what aspects of game development turned out to be more challenging than you expected and which aspects surprised you by being easier to work on? Ah, uh, surprising. That's a very interesting one. I think very surprising was how hard it was for us to develop a visual style and then to narrate to people how much progress happens throughout the lifespan of a game. When we shared first visuals, players were so thrown off by it. So many people were like, this looks horrible, there's still so much to do, I, this is not nice, I don't like this. And I thought, after the whole game, like the whole, I don't know, GTA 5 thing and everything, that people will have more of an understanding that a game makes significant steps in what it feels and looks like on the last parts of its lifespan before release, basically, on the last month or weeks before a release. Generally, a, a game can look like a gray mess until weeks before the release. Because lastly, do you start implementing the actual content? There might be th six recipes in a game until two weeks before the uh, alpha, and then suddenly there's 100 of them. And in our game, there's around, I think, 560 recipes currently. Four weeks ago, there was half of that. And then I, like we spent nights on an excel sheet to fill all these recipes and that is i think something that i anticipated to be just as hard as it was because it took a very very long to get all those recipes in to do all of them and then the tuning of course that takes very long and a lot of feedback but yeah so yeah the answer would be developing a visual style for this game uh, something that was a lot easier than i thought hmm, that's a very hard one ha huh, huh, huh. Not much about making games is actually quite easy, I would say. This was very hard, I think. Hmm. Like, I'm not just saying that, it's just not very easy. There's very few things that are easy about it. I would say most things that seem obvious are not obvious at all. I think... Ah! I think one of the very few things that actually was easy is we very early knew what type of game we want to make. And it was very easy to, together with our team and our founders, say this is what we want to achieve. We want a survival game, we want this, we want it to feel like that, that is what we're looking for. And I think even though that changes along the way, it was not nearly as hard to narrow down that first idea as it might be for some other teams. The yellowish circle on your town center does not expand when you upgrade your town. You can build town extensions. They are on your building menu. I'll show them to you right here. They look like this, these little things. And once you put that into your town, they'll expand in a circle. So put them right at the edge of your town center. And with more town levels, you get more of these. Because we did not want to allow your town just to randomly grow. We wanted to allow you to more customizable decide where your town should grow and in which direction. So yes, that's how you grow your town. Uh, and you need iron, yes, which we also made easier recently, so I hope that works. Are you ha able to hide your own name? Yes, you do this, and then your name is gone. No more player names. You can also hide and put on the chat by doing this, and then it's gone. Um, also, whenever you have such features, it is absolutely worth bringing them up on our Discord on the ideas. It just often helps because even if an idea seems small or very obvious, super cool, super good to do. Targeting unsuspecting travelers and raiding quite little towns. It's a shame, really. People are just trying to find some safety and rest. Okay, let's walk days. away and trigger this again because I walked here because the question was asked: Will there be little stories in the game? And I want to show you this as an example. Heard any news lately? I heard rumors that Molians have been seen digging around the slumber mines. Molians, huh? Those underground diggers are always up to something. Wonder what they're after this time. Well, whatever it is, I hope they don't cause trouble. You know, Molians usually prefer the solitude of their underground cities. It's rare to see them venturing far from their usual dwellings. Strange to see them venturing to new places. That's true. The slumber mines they're digging around are said to be an ominous place. Not many people have delved into before. It seems like they know something we don't. I wonder what they hope to find there. Perhaps it's something of great value or significance to them. Whatever it is, I hope it doesn't disrupt the balance of things. We should be cautious if we encounter any Molians on our journey. So this is not just random blah blah. 
This is connected to future content of the game. The slumber mines already exist as a placeholder and we have already and we will at some point work on them as caves. They will feature content that might be related to what you have just heard. And throughout this world, in several spaces, you will find Molians and you learn things about them. And once you learn more about them, you might be more aware and be like, huh, maybe I should keep digging into this a little bit. So we can actually go to a different law site because I think it is actually already in the game that is also Molian related. Um, and we could go to the slumber mines now. They will just be a cave entrance, basically. But they do have a law. That law will be narrated. We don't randomly put these pieces in. They are connected to future events or future content in this game. So yes, they are small stories that you can encounter. We just don't force them on you. We felt like environmental storytelling is the way we want to go in the future. In some cases that is voice NPC and in some cases, which is what we're walking to, towards now, that is just passive storytelling. I'll, I'm heading there right now. Yeah, 10,654. To be fair, that one also is kind of related, yeah. Can you lose uh, town... No, you will not use town lose town expansions, but you would lose the right to place more of them if your maximum is already hit. So, yes, that's how that works. Oh, shit, I can't go up here. I have to go over here. Uh, if there are more, if there are more questions, throw them my way. Um, I think Rene is watching. If is there any reason for me to end earlier, or is it fine if I keep going a little bit? Because I think another five to ten minutes, and then I actually have a call with Helmut, which is so dear to my heart. So I would actually really like to take that one. But still, we have a little bit of time. Keep going. Perfect. So basically. We already learned a little bit about the Molians, that they like to take stuff, that they pop up in places. And I have already seen screenshots of this, where people posted this little grave and said, huh, is there grave robbing going on here? Then if you actually follow this, there might be a path here. Someone seemed to be walking here. And if you follow this, you find this. And that looks awkwardly much like someone tiny has been coming here recent, uh, regularly and then took this and went somewhere. That is how we narrate this world. This might at some point be related to this because this is an event location actually. And this event location might then be connected to Molian maybe. And the fact that Molian also do grave robbing might be interesting to you in some other point. So that's how there is little stories in this world and all little things. You find all these robbed graves and if you start looking into them, you might learn more and more about this world. I've may seen many of these placeholders. Uh, which placeholders do you mean? So I know it seems so awkward because I think there's sometimes a disconnect in what people expect. I know this looks so friendly and cozy and it is friendly and cozy. It is a welcoming game for people who like communities, who like to build up a home for themselves and we will bring in more features with decorations, with having animals or little NPC in your town and make it your real home. But it is also actually a world that rewards when you invest energy into it. And that might sometimes feel like a grind, but sometimes that's just listening to an NPC or actually going exploring a little more than you initially wanted to. And maybe you'll find something that actually tells you something that helps you. I know it feels like pure flavor, these NPC, but most of them will now or at some point tell you something that is relevant. And for example, this is another one that will at some point be related to content, most likely. Ah, cave entrances. I just can't seem to get my mind off what became of the good folk of the Blade. Have you never heard of it? Huh. Well, let me tell you. Once the Soaring Blade stood as an invincible fortress, Thank carved you, into the very cliff itself like a golem watching over the lands of Ambrose. Huh, interesting. Its walls were impregnable, even in the midst of the core wars. Those days were filled with strife and bloodshed. But the defenders of the Blade held their ground, warding off countless assaults. At the foot of the mighty blade nestled a small settlement known as the Handle. The inhabitants were proud folk renowned for their mastery of the forge. It was there that the revered two-handed blades of the Praetorians were crafted. This thing here on my back? Born right there amongst countless others. Finest art, if you ask me. The town flourished, its prosperity fueled by the precious ores extracted from the slumber mines to the south and deals they struck with Lumine way before Queen Julia's time. Mm -hmm. Sorgoth's attacks shifted the focus to the southern border, where he aimed his attacks first. 
with the peace between the Sauromancers, uh, the Hedonist, and the new war against his lackeys stirring in the south, he relevance of the blade waned. The smithies were called to the inner core of the kingdom, to keep the source of our swords close. Hmm. With time, the settlement at the handle also lost its luster, eventually fading into ruins. Purpose? I can't say for certain what has become of it, and the expedition bridge in the north. Kind of a pity, if you ask me. So, that was a lot of information, but he told us not only about this settlement being called the Handle, which was at some point connected to smithing, so maybe if there's a vent one day here, pay attention to that, maybe there's something to gain from that, but he also talked us about the Blade, which is an impregnable fortress that even during the wars one is not conquered, maybe that becomes relevant at some point, and he talked about the Great Expedition Bridge, which is one of the gigantic unfinished construction product, uh, projects of the Hedonists, and even that might, at some point, become relevant when it comes to events or even expansions of the shield. And it might, maybe, at some point become an interesting way to enter a different area that he also mentioned, the political planes. So as I said, a lot of this is put in this game with the idea of someday making it even more relevant in mind. And yes, I know that there can be an alien wood tree here, which is absolutely gorgeous. Sadly, it's not right here. This is one of the prettiest spots it can be in. So yeah, this is super nice. But let's check if we can actually make it over here. Or maybe we'll use the bridge over there. So yeah, maybe I'll actually get my sword out. Also, I don't even wear shoes. I'm already getting cold. Uh, that's another one. Interesting. Generally, this area should be a lot more unforgiving. It is way too easy right now. The mountain biome is not only too easy to access, um, but also not punishing enough. We will fix that. We might actually even tomorrow or within today's patch change some things about that. Let us know how you feel about it. I think currently it is too easy to go in here and we will see what that does. We also had a very interesting idea how in the future we want to tackle that enemies feel too weak, but I want to tell you more about that once we made a decision here. But let's check. Oh, there's some iron right there. I'll just leave it. Uh, hop and hop. Perfect. Because that is the Great Expedition Bridge right there. You can actually already see it in this build. And it might... Why is there no NPC? Oh, they are over there. We also will shift NPC around a little bit so that it's sometimes not as easy to bypass them. Ooh, I'm getting freezing and damage right now. So I should really... Another bug, for example, that if I eat right now, I get well fed. This damage should negate well fed. Generally, the well fed buff should be get go away or going away when you take any damage, where the bandages don't do that. Both will be buffed, um, most likely in today's patch. Um, the healing will go up significantly on both of these, so that you don't have to make as much food and as much bandages, and fighting is not as punishing in early game. Later, that will even out a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let me go over here. Maybe I can also show you as a last little thing the Mossies area over there, which will also be home of some bandits. Oh, back to so. Because currently I'm also not getting slowed, which is also a problem. Like, the chill should slow me no so much by now that these guys should easily catch up to me, basically. Okay. You can carry bandages and stay up in the mountain biome. Yes, that would at some point potentially be possible. But then, if you want to do that, that is totally fine. It will not negate the slow, though, but you will at least potentially survive. If you want to make that much bandages, I mean, it's an open world game. If there is a wall and it's hard, but you feel like you can push through it f with some effort, cool. I just think currently very often this game does not tell you strongly enough that this is not something you should be doing already. Because it's in some regards still too easy to explore certain areas or fight certain enemies. But we will fix that. Uh, I know that I think the entrance to this is here. You can actually go here. Oh, that's cold again. And then you can go up here. Up here and then do a little jump here. And then we will just bypass this dude. No, no, thank you. Oh god, they are so cool. I love them so much. They might be my favorite enemies. I live near here because it's gorgeous. Uh, also, the weather effects here will in the future stronger affect certain building pieces. I think we have not narrated that well yet. So different buildings have not only do not only have different health, they have different values. Shrivel wood, for example, is a lot better in wet environments. Dark wood is a lot better in cold environments. Stone is a lot better in windy environments. So is granite. And in the future, we will put that on harder barriers too. Like for now, we didn't want people's buildings to immediately deteriorate. But in the future, it might be that after two or three days already, parts of your lightwood building start deteriorating if you put it in an environment that is too harsh for it. 
or even the earlier ones to encourage you to build better buildings and continue your upkeep. So yeah. There is also this will be another thing that I think I mentioned quite a bit but never fully explained. This will become a pit. This is where bandits will live. A pit is basically a high commitment area that has an entry, a submit and an end game or an end area. The entry area being a lot of enemies that have a very high frequency in how they walk around. The mid area being an area that is kind of easy to navigate, monsters wait in specific spots and you can kind of wiggle around them or fight them whenever you want. The end is where there is higher level enemies that offer a lot of rewards. It's generally not as easy to go into and to go out of. So we might uh, set this up hopefully within phase one of the early access, maybe later, but we will see. This will most likely be inhabited by bandits and maybe even feature a little bandit boss. Kind of a soft core open world dungeon. Also, if Pewey is watching, this is where your NPC would go. Let's hope that we eventually make that happen. Ah. So what time is it? Oh, 15. Maybe I will actually soon jump. Uh, let me show you one more thing, because it's so cool. Will the armor later look like more darker, or will the style be so cute as it looks now? You mean this armor? Uh, you can already craft different armor. There's a lot of different armor. This is basically the first um, shrill set of this. There's already Fatemir armor in the game. There is a lot of different armor. Not all looks like this. It looks completely different. So, yes, there is more armor sets in the game, and they will feature different visuals. Generally, it is a friendly style, and we will most likely keep that, but there might be more grim ones. The bandit set, for example, that is pretty dark. I've already seen concepts and the actual execution. <gasps> what is that? Level designers, look at this. Bah, an ugly thing. I think that's the waterfall peeking through. Me pointing that out. But I think our level design and environmental design did an amazing job. This area is so cool. I think it is one of the few areas where you already start feeling things are a little more fantastical. And I can't wait for that to happen. Also, I can't wait until this law site comes up. But we'll see. There are also potions and elixirs that help against different status effects. That is very true. Um, alchemy is a lot stronger. Currently, I think it is kind of hard to reach alchemy and we might have to revisit that a little bit, how we set that up and maybe mix it with cooking a little more, but we'll see. And um, I actually like the skill tree. I know that there's some people who think it's too complicated or things are a little, but I think there's just not enough explanation on it yet. Once that is in, I will, I'm looking forward to hearing more feedback. The combat will definitely improve. I think the combat now is, I think you will be surprised how little the changes are that combat requires and how much impact they will have. I'll not talk about them right now, but I think combat has for a long time we've not invested enough energy into it. Now for the first time in the last two to three weeks we've put a lot of energy in it. And I hope that most of you feel like from technical beta to this beta there has been a huge improvement in combat. It is a lot nicer, it is a lot more fun, but it is still not nearly where we want it to be, where it feels crisp and fun and rewarding and carrying different weapons feels like different things. So the question is how to get different armor. And not only can you go into the skill tree and skill outfitting, which will automatically unlock more armor, same as smithing, which will unlock forged armor at some point, um, but also there is rare drops on specific enemies. For example, the Fate Veer. If you kill enough of them, you can get a schematic for a Fate Veer armor, actually. And then once you have that, you can ooh, you can make the whole set. So sometimes it might make sense to keep killing these. I know we are still optimizing the drop rates on a lot of these. And considering I'm on the American server, the drop rate is actually pretty okay. And then in these mystery bags, there can be super rare recipes for rare pieces of armor. That is how you can also get more armor in the world. And at some point, we would also like to introduce kind of trainers where you can trade specific things for specific recipes, maybe in Korheim. Uh, generally, we want to increase the significance of Korheim. Is this in the game already, those recipes? I am not sure if the Fate Vee set is in the game. Um, I'll just ask my colleagues. Rene? Can, am I allowed to cheat myself the Fate Veer set or will that break shit? <laughs> I'm never sure on this build because I'm not sure how much it is implemented into this build. Ah. 
I'll have to wait for the answer because Rene probably is now confirming with engineers like, can, can he do this or is this breaking something? Good question, let's try. Okay, worst case, th things will crash now. So let the cheating commence. I first have to make some space in my inventory. Let's just remove some things. Who needs natural oil, huh? <laughs> so easy to get. I know exactly where that is. Okay, let's put this up here, this up here. Then I can actually show you some of the armors that we already have in the game. Uh, I need a little more space, so let's get rid of the coal. There's also so much of that. No one needs that. Who needs the feathers? Mushrooms. <laughs> they are in bandages. Who does that? Anyways, um, let's get to inventory. Then we go to Fate Veer. Uh, there they are, the Fate Veer feather gloves. I think the we need to get the... Yeah, there they are. We need this one time. Then we need the rope. We need the sandals, we need the magnificent strides, and I think there's also a headpiece. Ah, there is. The Fate Via Feather Fedora, which is only called the Fedora because I like the word so much. There it is. Let's put the set on immediately. So far, nothing breaks. That is the Fate Via set, ladies and gentlemen. If you wear the whole thing, also, I think it already has that benefit. It might be not in this test, though. Has a gigantic heat resistance, 20, incredibly good in, in warm environments. This is in the game. This is one of the sets that we have. I think it is absolutely gorgeous, carries those feathers. This is a, a good example of what a recolor can do. This is the same set with some nice things thrown on there. Amazing work by our concept department and by our artist Helmut, who is in the chat. Really pretty. I love this set. It's one of my favorites. And I think a lot of people asked, oh, why is this and that? You can also mix match stuff. You can just throw this in the mix and do something more interesting. And just to keep it in, I don't think it is already in, but let us check. It is not, but what is in is the Moon Hunter set, which I think I can cheat right here. Let's get some of the pieces at least. Let's get the, how about we get the headgear, uh, then we get the Halberg. And let's get the legs too, just so that we can mix a little bit. We mix it with the Moon Hunter set. Also, how about we mix the pants in there and do a cool hat. And this is the Moon Hunter set now. It's these parts of it. I don't think it looks the way I would like it to. Maybe we mix a little differently. Take the pants back. Maybe that's cool. Oh, that's already a little better. So yeah, there is a lot more sets in this game already. Can you dye your clothes? Not yet, but we want that feature at some point. I think we're a little hesitant because we want to at least think about it if we want to make visuals connected to what gear someone is carrying. Because, and I think this is something that still a lot of people have not fully understand because we're not very good at explaining it yet. These sets now have a specific setup of stats. Life, attack, defense, and a very high chill resistance on this one. Life, attack, and defense is the stat setup, which means my first high stat is life then attack and then defense. So I am kind of an offensive tank, basically. Or offense, offensive. <laughs> kind of an offense-based tank, an attack tank, basically. If I carry this whole set, I want someone to know that. I want someone to see me and feel like, oh, that is someone who's simp like, who is obviously going for these stats. If I want to go and play an adventure now, that would be a good candidate to defend the relay tower, for example. Someone who has a lot of health and hits quite hard, that's pretty good. Not very agile, though. So maybe if there's too many enemies, that person might be overcome. Maybe we send someone who is wearing something like this with him. Like maybe something more of this setup, which will result in more of a stat mix of crit and attack. Someone so who hits pretty hard, has a lot of endurance and a lot of attack, so I can basically continue to spam my right click which does more damage because my it re like because of my endurance this regenerates a lot faster than it would without these pieces so i am a lot better at keep a very consistent damage output over long fights and that is bruiser thank you that was the term i was missing um with the first one so this would basically kind of be an agile damage dealer setup and that is the vision for this game at some point. That the gear that someone is wearing also gives you an indicator of what their playstyle might be. And once a second weapon comes in, these stats will also have several uses. So you might be someone that is kind of wearing very tanky gear, but maybe the life stat that we have here also scales with the healing value on gear. So you're kind of very tanky, not doing a lot of damage, but you're doing very high damage output, a uh, very high healing output, which immediately is told to me by the outfit. And then let's say I want that to be visually represented. So we make that set green, for example. 
And that's why we are a little hesitant with just allowing for recoloring, because currently we are doing that to build new sets, because it is very cost efficient to us. Oh, that was a long explanation. Can you tell us what unique sets are in the game right now? I think the most important thing is unique sets, does that only mean the visuals or the thing? Because a lot of you, I noticed, start putting on these sets and think, yeah, now I'm good, I have a better set. This is still low level gear. Even the low level Moonhunter Hauberg, and like this is the same gear score. This is not a better thing. The quality of an item indicates how good it is. A better sword means a, a sword of higher quality. And we will do a better job at explaining that to you as players and also showing more impact from you wearing better gear and then hitting harder with it. And we already have a very cool idea on how to do that, that we're actually executing right now. I hope we can still get it in until early access launch. We feel like, hey, I put something new on and something cool and I actually feel stronger now. Yeah. So unique visuals are currently in the game, I think six maybe, maybe seven. I'm not entirely sure to be honest because there's some visuals that are not unlocked because we locked the skill progression here. A lot of the new sets are in these. Like whenever people say I'm done with the game, you have not even played half of this game. When all this is maxed out, you have not seen 50% of the content still. Like we were very stingy when it said here 100 additional hours if you want to see all of this that is way more than 100 hours and some of it might be locked behind grind some of it is just locked behind the early knowledge once you play this the second the third and the fifth time you will get better at it and it will feel the same but it will be a lot more streamlined because you know what to do next so yeah i would say maybe five to six sets are currently in visually but a lot more are technically coming with time and we are still fine-tuning the low drop chances or the rare drop chances of these schematics and these sets so bear with us you will see a lot more of them in the upcoming tests we just did not want to show you all the content yet it is still a demo and we want you to feel awe and surprise moments when you finally get to see all of this stuff there is more. You already have enough, my friends. You have enough. Don't be greedy. It is still a demo. We're a small studio. If we show you everything, you will not buy our game. Also, mentioning that, please make sure to wishlist this game. If this is the first stream you're seeing, or if this is the 20th time you're hearing about this, good lord, we did a good job. We deserve that wishlist. Even if you end up not buying it, which I highly recommend you do, Still give us that wish list if you like what you're seeing here. If you believe in this idea, if things that you're hearing here today, you like them and you think they sound great, make sure that you wish list us, that you stay for the journey. This will in one year be an even better game. And in less than a month, we will bring it into early access and show you that we've been working on the quality and improving it. And we've listened to your feedback during this test. We do that consistently. I hear you. I hear that you feel like in the beginning, for example, recipes should change. That is why we already made it so that early food now will heal you more and early bandages will be better. I hear you that you feel like combat is not impactful enough. We focus energy on that now immediately. I understand that you feel like it is too easy to go into the mountains. We will tune that, we will adjust that and we'll make the enemy stronger there without making them game breaking. And we understand that you need more features to play together with more of your friends and keep them engaged in your town and we will focus on that through out the early access and bring in more content that's a good final word thank you very very much for being here today at play Corborn on all potential social media accounts this will also go right into the steam playlist where you can also find our demo make sure to wishlist make sure to play the game as much as possible because even that is helping us and make sure to send feedback not only through the feedback form on the game but also through our Discord, because we really appreciate it. And as Adrian said, make sure to share the content you love about this game also on social media, if you don't mind, because that allows us to share it, to interact with it, and to grow further on platforms like Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and so on, because that is an amazing experience or opportunity for a small studio like ours. And so far, we feel like everyone who sees this game likes it or at least the majority of people who sees it likes it. We've just not yet succeeded at showing it to enough people because we're just limited in the possibilities we have there. But we're very, very grateful for the people that are here today and that are checking this out because it's been an amazing journey with you and we can't wait to finally get this game out. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful time because now I am going to switch back to the main camp to actually do a little wave at the end. 
and there's the little wave. Have a wonderful time. Thank you so much. If you're seeing this on Steam, there will be another live stream coming up now that explains a lot better what this game is, what it does, that is less focused on our community. Can't wait to get you in the game. See you soon. Thank you and bye.